because I have terrible dreams about him. So there's witness already, both in the dreams and the physical, and even in examining, because these people have been in the government long enough to know what, who is guilty or not. So in their examination, Jesus did not do anything wrong, deserving death or no wrong at all in his life. But yet the people were saying, crucify him. If you do not crucify him, you are no friend of Caesar. And uh, you'll see the Bible he says in there, because, here, because these leaders got scared of what the people were saying, he handed Jesus to them. The fear of man. After encountering God, we have to walk in a different way, think a different way, believe that God is powerful and do not be moved by the thoughts of man. The fear of man is so strong that Jesus was crucified because of that. Because he was so scared. This is, this is the yeast of Herod. He washed his hand. You think by washing your hand, you put the responsibility to man? You just, you just became uh, compliant with the sanitation code. <laughs> Other than that, you haven't washed your sin. Pilate doesn't want to stand there and be responsible for Jesus, but because people are saying, you are no friend for Caesar, we're going to tell on you. He said, I don't want this report coming, coming back to Rome. You know, so he said, you know what? Uh, I'm out of this case. Let me wash my hand. Bahala na kayo Passing on the buck. This is, this is, the, 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 this is uh, Herod's uh, yeast. This is when you, take, you do not take responsibility for yourself. I had a patient. Uh, he was really belligerent. He was asking for a fight. It is funny. He's a short guy. And he came in because his mother threw him out. <laughs> his mother he injured his shoulder. And when he came to us, he was looking for a fight on another uh, officer. Come here, let's fight together. You know. And I said, you can't even beat your mom. I mean, your mom threw you out on the street. You yeah. broke your shoulder probably. And, and you want this guy to fight you? And, but he just went ahead doing that, and then he eventually said, you know why I'm acting like this? Because you made me angry. Is there any truth to that? Have you heard that before? On your, on your probably your husband or your wife or your kids, oh, you made me angry. No, I did not make you angry. You chose to be angry. You chose, you know, I'm like this, now I'm shouting. Now I can't control myself. Who said so? And so we end up tying him guy, tying the guy down. Now, now that we did that, you know, we cannot, uh, the yeast of Herod is refusing to take responsibility for ourselves. When things are not happening right, we say, oh, it's the pastor's fault. Oh, it's his fault. It's their fault. It's this guy's fault. It's the other guy's fault. It's, ne it's never me. That's the yeast of Herod, blaming somebody else. God is saying, no, you cannot grow like that. You have to take responsibility over yourself because if you see others as, as in the wrong and you don't see yourself, you cannot grow. He that covers his sin shall not prosper, the Bible said. I mean, sure, some people probably had some, something to add into that, but the, if the eventual action that you did, you cannot pass it down to somebody. It's yours. Pick it up and say, Lord, I'm sorry. It's me. The yeast of Herod, because of man's opinion and refusing to take, authority, to take responsibility over themselves. Now, there's another yeast that the Bible is talking about. In Matthew 13, verse 13, he told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a yeast that a woman took and mixed into 60 pounds of flour until it worked all through the dough. The dough. I was thinking, 60 pounds of flour? That's as heavy as Eli. <laughs> 60 pounds of flour, what's up with that? But that's what it is. The Bible said the kingdom of God is also like a yeast. A yeast is, a yeast, like we have said, it's a way of thinking. When we put it to ourselves, it brings the effect inside. The yeast spreads influence, and yet it is concealed. But the influence is dramatic. And I could tell, as a pastor for a long time, what kind of yeast is working in a person's heart. I mean, just give, give me a few, a few minutes with a person, and we talk together, and I could tell what yeast is in there. You know, Jesus said, let the yeast of the kingdom work. After refusing the yeast of Herod, after refusing the yeast of the Pharisees, after not walking in their walk, he said, now there is a yeast that is good. Take that in you and walk in it. 
And that yeast will become so influential in your life, and people will be blessed. Give you, let me give you an example here. In uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. Do not return evil for evil or insult for insult. Because before we used to do that. And I was watching the presidential debate. You know, in a few months before, talagang they're like into that. But instead, bless others because what? You were called to inherit a blessing. I love that. First Peter 3, if you don't remember anything else, put this in your head. Do not return evil for evil or insult for insult, but instead bless others because you were called to inherit a blessing. The another translation is this. Bless them so that you might obtain the blessing. Isn't that like just giving? Give and it shall be given to you. That the, the old mindset, the old Jewish mindset actually is tooth, an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Pag binuntal ka, may black eye ka, somebody has to get a black eye too. If I lost a tooth, somebody has to lose a tooth on, their, on the other end. But Jesus is saying, no. Bless them. Bless them because in blessing them, you have been called to inherit. This is our calling, he said. Your calling is to be a blessing. Can you see now? After encountering God, after forsaking the, the previous walk that you had, after changing your mind, God is saying, now you know why, I'm change, why you want to change your mind? You have changed your mind because this is your calling. Because your calling is to be a blessing. And that's powerful. I am called to be a blessing. Our calling is to be a blessing. And to inherit also a blessing. That is the highest. I am not called to be a burden. I am called to be a solution. I am not called to be the question, but I am called to be the answer. I am not called to be the person to fear, but I am the person to bring peace. Hindi ako yung pampagulo. God forbid. Ako yung solution sa kapayapaan. I am not the one who brings division. I'm the one who brings things, things together. That is our calling. I am called to be a blessing. Have you been, have you been in a work where it's really, it's so chaotic and that they're wait, waiting for somebody to come until you come, you've fixed it, the whole thing. Because that's what you are. Because that you are a problem solver. You are not the problem to solve, but you are the problem. You are here to solve the problem. That's our calling. And the Bible said whenever you bless, which is your calling, you inherit the inheritance of blessing. And I was just saying, Lord, is that how you release it? You said, yes, that's how. If you want the blessings of God released to you because you are an heir, bless. Bless others. And look at this. I shared to you last, this, uh, the other week. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 15. Do all things without grumbling or disputing so that you will prove yourselves to be blameless and innocent children of God above reproach in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you appear as lights in the world. Praise God. Do all things without what? Grumbling or disputing. Like Lucas. <laughs> oh, he's not going to do that anymore. Because Lucas, he learned it. Do not... Do all, do all things without grumbling and disputing. In fact, the Bible in one translation, stop complaining. This is another translation. Stop complaining so that you become blameless. Did you know that if you complain, you blame somebody? Right? When you complain, you blame somebody. But the Bible said if you complain, you actually become the blamed. And it's like, how is that, Lord? Because you are called to bless. So you chose to complain. You have not added anything good to the problem. You made it worse. Whenever there's a situation that needs fixing, and you come in, they start pointing. This is God is saying, I did not call you to do that. I called you to bring a blessing in that situation and fix it. Now that you have complained, you just became the problem. Our mouth, our lips, are, the Bible said, are supposed to bring blessing. My calling is to bless. You saw the situation already. Do not even define it. Come and bring the blessing. The Bible said, if you do that, then you will become blameless. How is it that if I point out what is wrong, I became the blame? But if you don't point out what is wrong, but you point out the solution, you became blameless. 
a lot of people, and I always say this, for, fame, for, for an ability to add to the solution, they would just point out what's wrong. Have you seen that? Alam mo na nga yung mali, darating sa tuturo pa ulit mali. And they feel like they were the one who enlightened it to you. Bro, before you came in, we saw the problem already. We're like trying to work it out. And they would just keep on saying, oh, because of this, it's the public system, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's because probably you chose to, to not pray for this. It's because probably you just made it bigger, you know. And, you know, there's, there's something about pointing out somebody's mistake. You know what happens? You just become bigger. Diba? Oh, I found the mistake. Nakita ko, when I did the calculation, there was a big mistake. Bida ako. Oh, I saw they were, they were hiding it. I saw his mistake. I saw this and that. You know what happened? You actually did not grow bigger. You just put somebody lower. He's still the same. You just compare yourself to somebody shorter than you. You did not grow any taller. But when you bless, you become taller. And you lift up people higher. So that's why the Bible is saying that this is your calling. Your calling is that you would walk in the east of the kingdom, whereby you will return blessing for an insult, so that when you do that, you inherit the blessing. We are not the question, we are the answer. We are not the problem, we are the solution. So how do I release the blessing? By not reacting, but, but acting in a reformed way, thinking with the leaven of the kingdom of God. You know, in summary, let me just wrap this up. We went and encountered the Lord in a mountain, at Scully's Mountain. There will be ten, eight to ten lessons of this. The first one today is to stand from your decision. We made our decision. We felt the Lord. Amen? You were touched by God. You saw his goodness, you saw his power. And so you said, Lord, I'm going to follow you. And so today we're saying, Lord, I'm making firm on that decision. I'm standing from that decision. But God is saying, this is what you should do. Do not walk back to where you used to do. Get out. Do not go back to the village, he said. Do not go back to the village. Secondly, do not think the way you used to think. Because there are leavens that operate. There is the fake religious thing. That there is a God, but he's impractical. He's so far away. He doesn't care about you. We know that our God cares about us. Amen. Our God is responsible as a father is responsible over us. We do not have any responsibility to God. He assumed that position and so he's responsible over us. What he's asking is, why don't you get your claim over me? That's all he's asking. And secondly, he's warning us about the leaven. The yeast of the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and Herod. The yeast of the Pharisees is that fake religious stuff. And the yeast of Herod is the fear of man. The inability to take responsibility over our own actions. And lastly, we saw in here that there is the yeast of the kingdom of God, which I like. The Bible said, for it is blessing. You are called to bless and to inherit the blessing. And so whenever we see situations, we bless. If people are against us, we bless. The Bible said, bless and do not curse because it works. Bless and do not curse because when you do this, you overcome evil with good. The Bible said, when you do this, you heap heaping coals. Sa Tagalog, naglagay ka ng nagbabagang mga baga. Meron mga ganun? Nagbabagang mga baga. Naglagay ka ng baga sa kanilang ulunan. Because people who hate you who curse you, actually expecting that you will fight back the same way. But you know, you can, they, can never, they can never know how to fight back when suddenly what's coming their way is the goodness of God. Amen. The same thing with our wives and husbands. If they are pushing your buttons and everything, you should just suddenly say, you know, I, I love you and everything. What's going on? Can I cook you something? Or buy you something? You know? Or just uh, how, what is going on? You know, don't point out what's wrong. May yung ulo na naman you know, just be passive, be a blessing, and that's, that's wonderful. It turns over the whole thing, but malam mo, tatawa na lang yung tatawa mo. What's going on with me? That's what the Bible said, because we have been called to be a blessing. And the Bible said also, do not complain. Do not complain. Praise God. Can we make a pledge? Tatlo na lang hindi magko-complain. Nasambay complain department of City Hall. Do not complain. I, I saw this uh, uh, thing in the internet. Uh, complaint box. There's a box there that says complaint box. Uh, if you look at the back, it's a shredder. 
Just keep pushing. Nothing.